welcome to part three in the conclusion of our series we are calling Choose Joy, and we're going to have some fun today. We're going to have some fun as we close, so get ready. It's going to be fun, all right? Well, I want to welcome those who are online, as I always do. We're glad you're here. Vineyard, let's show our online family that we've figured out how to get some joy in our life. Let's welcome them with an extra special <laughs> clap. We're so glad you're here. All right. Well, we kicked off the series two weeks ago, and I shared how this series, Choose Joy, was really birthed out of a time of prayer at the end of last year. You know, I really went to the Lord just praying, hey, what do you have for me, my family, and this church vineyard in this coming year? And the pastors, we walked away really feeling that, hey, prayer, uh, in prayer, we've, we kind of came to the conclusion the Lord was speaking to us that this would be a year of great joy for us. It doesn't mean there wouldn't be challenges, but that it was going to be a year of great joy. And we talked about over the past two weeks, and we'll talk about today, how the Lord brings us joy in the middle of it. In other words, in the middle of our problems and troubles, he brings us joy. But the kicker, the revelation of this series is that we have to choose it. We've got to choose it. We have to make some decisions to choose joy. See, joy is not a feeling. It's a way of living. It's something we choose to do. And we talked about in the first part of this series how the first choice we make is prayer. We have to be a people who don't act first, but we pray first. And that produces prayer. Uh, it produces joy. When we pray, it produces joy. Last week, we talked about how we had to make a daily choice of purity, that I'm not going to let the world gunk me up with all these things. I'm going to turn those things over to God, the shame and the guilt that comes with poor decisions. or we, We're going to give that to God. I don't have to carry that. That's a choice of purity. And there's joy when we decide to turn those things over to God. And today, we're going to talk about another choice we have to make. It's another P word, which I'll share with you. Uh, but I really want us to make that choice. And we're knocking on the door of the fall season. That's right, summer's almost over. Fall season is almost here. And I wanted to share a quick event coming up with you. As Daniel mentioned, the Dream Team Party, August 13th. You want to be there. It's a lot of fun, a lot of laughing. How you can get on the invite list, I'm going to put you on Samuel's special invite list, is you come to Growth Track Step 1 today. And it's okay if you don't finish the growth check. Just come today, and you are invited to that party. You can sit at my table, special guest. My table's usually in the corner, though, so that's where mom puts me. <laughs> you know, I invite you. <laughs> be with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a great time, okay? Well, today, you know, as we, I wanted to conclude this series, and I went here because I want to launch joy for the rest of the year. Even though we're finishing this series today, I really want to launch it in your life for the rest of the year. And really, you know, some of you have been going through this series and you're like, man, I'm just ready for that joy to show up. I'm ready for that joy to show up. And so, and I want that for you today. And I don't want it to end today. I want you to carry that with you. So starting off today's message, you know, we've had this theme verse we've looked at every week and it's Paul talking here. And Paul, he's had a rough life. He's had a lot go on in his life. He has no reason to have a good attitude, yet he's so joyful. He says, hey, I'm sorrowful, I'm miserable, I, I have pain and, and sadness, yet I choose joy. I'm always rejoicing. I'm poor, I don't have a dime to my name, yet I'm able to make others rich. I have nothing, yet I possess everything. And see, I really want us to follow in Paul's footsteps. See, Paul made some choices in the middle of it, in the middle of everything, he's choosing joy. He's choosing joy. And that's what I want for us. See, I want us to make that decision See, when we choose it, if we wait to feel it, we'll be waiting for a while. I want us to choose joy. I want us to choose joy. So week one, we talked about prayer first. That produces joy. Last week was a choice of purity. And this week, the next P word I want you to have, and what we conclude this series with is, this is Isaiah here. We've looked at this passage every week too. Is he's talking about Jesus and the things he brings. He brings to give them, that's us, the oil of joy for mourning in the garment of, let's say this together, praise. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know, and I know we've talked about this. Some of this, the spirit of heaviness, it freaks some of you out that there is an unseen thing going on. There are heavenlies and there's things at work that we don't see. And that doesn't change it, though. There are things at work that we don't see. The Bible talks about an enemy. His name is Satan, the devil, who has a plan for your life to steal, kill, and destroy it. And he's on the offensive. He's at work trying to come after you and to paralyze you with problems and and he wants to keep you in a place where you're separated from God. And I don't want to give you fear. I want to give you encouragement that we can overcome that. That the Bible actually says there's an antidote. There's a prescription for this spirit of heaviness. It's the garment of praise. The garment of praise. 
two observations about that garment of praise I want you to notice. The first one is that it's a garment, a garment. In other words, you have to wear it. You put it on. Let me say it this way. It's in the closet. You just got to put it on. You got to reach in and grab it and put it on. See, if you wait to feel it, you're going to be waiting a long time. And I think that's our natural tendency is to let our feelings dictate a lot of our decisions. That's a natural tendency. But you can't let that drive. So I, even though I don't feel it, I'm going to make a choice, right? I'm going to make a choice to put on this garment, this garment. We wear it. And it's really what rebuffs the spirit of heaviness. The second observation I want you to see here is notice that it says garment of praise. It doesn't say worship. It says praise, not worship. There's a difference there. There's a difference. See, worship is this internal expression, and a lot of what we do when we follow God is actually a form of worship, if you didn't know. We're, worship is important, don't get me wrong, but it's this internal expression of what's going on between me and God, and, and it's a very important part of our faith walk. In fact, next week, we'll be kicking off a series where we talk all about authentic worship. So it's important, but it's different from praise, and I want you to get that, that those two are different, okay? Okay. Some of you have asked, you know, hey, why do we always start off? I've been coming for a few Sundays. Why do we always start off with a fast song and then move to slower songs? I, I don't get it. Why do we do that? Well, if you didn't know, that's actually biblical. It's biblical. That's why we do that. The Bible says enter his presence, that's God's presence, with praise and thanksgiving. Enter his presence with praise. David says this in Psalms. This isn't on your outline, but he says come, in other words, start here, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. That's God, Jesus. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. So I'm not going to start by talking about what I need. I'm going to tell him what he's done. I'm going to sing about how great God is, how mighty he is. But then it changes. Watch this. David goes on to say, well, now let us now bow down and worship. Let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Why? Because I've realized he's my God. And even more than that, we are his people. He wants to walk with us and care for us. We are the flock of his pasture. He cares about us. See, when you realize that, that's worship. See, something's going on internally. And I want to highlight the difference between praise and worship because I really feel so many of us are comfortable with worship, but not <laughs> praise, but not praise. And, you know, as a pastor, I get to visit a lot of different church conferences and I've seen this trend happening over the past few years where there seems to be less and less praise as a part of the, the worship experience. They, you know, we go to these conferences and then they just dive deep immediately. It's real deep, real fast. I'm like, man, I want to get there, but you, know, you, you got to walk me there. They're missing this praise, the, these fast, joyful shouting of praise to God about who he is and what he's done and, you know, what he has done in our lives and how amazing he is. And it's not just, hear this, look at me, hear this. See, I really believe it's a trick of the enemy when we have just worship and we miss praise. It's a trick of the enemy because there really is a biblical process God sets up to entering his presence, how we come in to experience him. And hear this, this is important, and hear my heart. I, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but some of you are having a hard time experiencing worship, and I'm telling you, it's because you're coming in during song two or three. There is a key part to that first song. There's a process where we enter his presence. And I tell you that because I want joy for you. I want you to experience the joy that comes with praise and worship. There's joy found in that, okay? And I want that for you. Let me say it this way. I want to say it a different way for you. We praise God for what he has done. We pray, so it's not about me, it's all about him. You know, we go singing, awesome in this place. Jesus, you are awesome in this place. You will be praised. Come on. That's how it went, right? <laughs> We're praising God. See, and the power in that is we came in this room maybe not feeling that way. We came in this room maybe not thinking that way. But when we start there, it, it focuses. It focuses us on, okay, God, I'm going to come to you in this moment. See, but then it changes, and we go to worship, and we worship God for who he is. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be faithful. See, there's a closeness going on, an intimacy. Let me say it another way. See, when we praise, it's actually horizontal. You know, and what I mean by that is some of the language in that song, those songs, those praise songs, it's not even up language. It's like horizontal language. Isn't he awesome? Man, Jesus, he is awesome. He's awesome. And the power in that is we're encouraging each other. See, as I said, we might have not came in that room in that in the room in that condition, 
but something changes. See, what happens is you got your people, are, you know, they're feeling the song, and then, you know, the people next to them. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit. See, there's power in corporate praise. And let me say this. You know, I love technology and how it allows us to spread the gospel in many new ways. But praise, you have to be in the room to experience it. You do. You really do. And let me say it this way. If you can be here, you ought to be here. And it's really for this. It's for praise. See, imagine yourself at a football game or a concert. You know, you're the only one there. Great play. It's, it's not the same, right? It's not. Same's true with church. See, praise is this experience. Let me say it this way. I can worship without you, but I can't praise without you. I need you to praise. There's something powerful in that. So see, praise is horizontal, but then it becomes vertical when we go to worship. All attention on God again. We go to this place where we reflect, you know, faithful you are. And then we engage. We come to the altar. We engage with God. And, you know, that's why I encourage people, hey, when we actually go to worship, all eyes should be on Jesus. So we're not going to worship in a way that causes people to look at me or I'm a distraction. I want all eyes on Jesus. Because during worship, praise, we're going to get rowdy. But when we go to worship, we're going to focus on God. We're going to focus on God. These dynamics are important, friends. They really are. They really are. One more, let me say it this way, is that when we worship, it's actually a response. God, you love me? <laughs> well, I love you too. But when we praise, we're making a choice. We're making a choice. See, praise, I maintain it's not something you naturally want to do. It's a choice you have to make. And see, I want to talk to you today about being people who choose to praise. In the midst of whatever's going on, I believe we can be a people who choose to praise. Put on that garment of praise. And see, there's power in that. Remember, it rebuffs. Some of you are carrying the spirit of heaviness. And I want you to swap that for the garment of praise. I want you to swap that. Let me tell you why praise works. This is on your outlines here. It's that praise focuses on God, not me. It's the first reason why it works. We're focusing on God in that moment, not me. And this is important because I really feel more than ever we live in a narcissistic society, and you're not alone. I'm there with you. You know, the whole selfie generation, social media is about me, my vacation, my food I'm eating. It's all about me. But there's joy found when we take our eyes off of ourselves for a second. And we focus on God. And this is different than, you know, worship again. Lord, help me. I have these needs. I have these, these things I'm carrying. And hear my heart. You know, he cares about those things. He really does. But there needs to be this moment where we just put those things to, this, to the side and say, God, I serve a bigger God than my problems. You're mightier than my problems. Because what that does is it produces joy in us. See, those who sacrifice thank offerings honor me. God likes it. God likes it. So we're going to do worship, and Lord, I'm going to let you minister to me, but I'm going to include some praise as well. I'm going to include some praise. Let's make it about God. And see, there's a process at work that God wants us to begin there and then move into worship. See, the second thing praise does, worship gets us in the moment, right here and now. God, you're meeting me right now. But what praise does, the second thing praise does, why it works is that it reminds us of the eternal, not just the temporal. In other words, it helps us see things from a different perspective. In other words, when I praise, I actually stop looking at it the way I see it, and I start to look at it from God's perspective. And there's power in that. What that means is I'm going to sing some songs that maybe I don't feel. Or I'm going to say some words, sing some words on the screen that maybe I don't feel in this moment. Lord, I've got the victory. You're great, God. You're great. I've got the victory in all things. No, you don't. You fought with your wife on the way to church. Come on. <laughs> you're, you're standing there. I'm going to punch everybody in my row for singing. This is driving me nuts. <laughs> See, we don't always feel it, but we don't let our feelings dictate our decisions, right? We have to make a choice. Man, I'm going to praise even though I might not feel these words right now. And what that does is it gets our eyes off of us, and it, gets our, it focuses on God. And there's power in that, because when you focus on God, you start seeing it from his perspective. And this is really a Christian discipline, is that, man, things might not be working out, but I know they're going to work out. I know God's got it in control. That's a Christian discipline. There's joy when you live life that way. There really is. And hear my heart, please. He does care about what's going on right now. And worship can go there. But we need to get to a place where we're also putting on the garment of praise. We're making a choice to focus on 
God and how mighty he is. Paul teaches us this secret when he says, man, we are hard pressed on every side. So this side, this side, this side, all sides, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned. In other words, man, I don't feel like God's here. I don't feel it, but I know he's here. I know it. I'm not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. How did Paul get, how is Paul talking this way? Well, he says, for our light and momentary troubles, so the now, the things going on right now, they're really working to something bigger. They're working into God's plan, an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And Paul says, I have this discipline where I can focus not just on the now, but the then. In other words, I'm not just consumed with the troubles I have right now. I'm able to see God's plan at work. And that's done through praise. Paul gives us this discipline here. He says that we fix our eyes not on what is seen, so not everything going on right now that seems to consume my whole vision, not what is seen, but on what is unseen. In other words, God's plan. And the Bible says his plan is to prosper you and to bless you, not to harm you. So we focus on that, not what, uh, because we don't focus on what is seen because it's temporary. The now is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. God's plan, his plan will work out. It might not be working out right now, but it will work out, I promise you. When you follow God, it works out every single time because God cares about you. And I'm trying to get this in your life because when you really start to walk with that garment of praise, you carry it day to day, not just on Sundays, you experience joy. You experience joy, and it's so much easier to choose joy when you're wearing that garment of praise. The last thing I want to share with you that praise does is it's an outward thing. It's not an inward thing. And this might offend some of you. See, praise, it needs, to be an out, it needs to be an expression. It needs to be an expression. You know, if you grew up in church at all, you know that old church song. It goes, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Yeah, my heart. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Some of you know. But they, and they scream where over and over again. Where? Down in my heart. Where? And they're doing that because it's down in your heart, and they can't see it. You need to put it in your face. <laughs> you need to put it in your hands. Get the joy out of your heart. That's what praise is, is we have it in our heart, but we actually make it an expression. It's outward. That's what praise really looks like. See, worship is very inward, as I've said. Feelings, things inside, and it's important, but praise, it's an expression. It's outward, and I'm concerned because we, we've learned how to worship, but we've forgotten how to praise. And praise is just so important to, to getting to a place where we receive joy from Jesus. And so it says this, that through Jesus in Hebrews, therefore let us continually offer to God, notice the language, a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of praise. In other words, I'm going to make a choice. I might not feel it, but I'm going to make a choice to praise the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. In other words, there's fruit. Fruit is produced from healthy things, life-giving. There's, there's life there. There's joy. There's joy. But we have to make a choice. We have to make a choice to praise. And I'm telling you, friends, when you make that choice, you will find joy. All right, well, let me coach you in how to take some next steps with praise, okay? We're going to have some fun. Uh, I'm not going to make you do anything. Don't worry. Stay where you are. I'm going to do it all. I want to help you, though. And hear my heart. You know, I'm going to have some fun with you. I don't want to offend anybody. But really, we have some language here at Vineyard, you know, take your next step, whatever that is. Take your next step. And I say the same thing in praise. Whatever your next steps, just grow. Just grow with God, okay? So let me, let me show you some next steps you can take in praise. So let me, talk, let me start by talking to all my arm folders, pocket praisers, and right over left with my polished ones. Come on. <laughs> all right, so here's your next step. If you fall in those three categories, here it is right here. Get some praise in that foot going. Come on, get it in there. Start there. And then once you get that down, you're feeling comfortable with that, go ahead and get this way going. <laughs> Hands stay right here. Don't worry. And you get, you get this way going. Then when you get that down, your next step, caution with this one, caution sign, is clapping. And caution because if you didn't know, we are a diverse church. And sometimes those songs, man, you start out with the electric guitar driven. Yeah. But then we, we get some soul going. It's like, so caution, don't hurt yourself, okay? <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> once you get that down, okay, once you get clapping down, then you're going to come in one Sunday and you'll be like, okay, you hit the Lord. It's, it's my day to do the hand thing. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try the hand thing. Take it slow, though. Don't hurt yourself. Some swaying, and then, uh, pow, put it back. 
real fast, <laughs> real fast. Look around. Try it again. Put it back, put it back. Once you get that down, then, okay, you do what I call holding the baby. Hold the baby. Okay, I'm holding the baby. No touchdown, no touchdown yet. Just holding the baby. And when you're ready, you do the touchdown. Friends, I just want you to take the next step. Whatever that is, whatever it is, here's why. Because there's joy in it. There is joy. When you take one of those steps, I'm telling you, it's a monumental moment in your walk with Christ. I remember the first time I raised my hand in church. I do. It's powerful. There's, when you get to a place where you're like, man, I don't care what other people think. I'm going to praise my God. There's power. There's joy in that. It produces joy. And hear, hear me, though. When you start to take those steps, all of hell and some of earth will come at you. They don't want you to experience that joy. They don't. The enemy doesn't want that for you. Some of your friends might, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? You know, and the religious will definitely come after you. You know, churches that don't raise their hands. What, you know, you're the hand-raising church. What are you doing? You know? And really, this is not a new issue. This was the same thing in Jesus' day. You know, Jesus, in this passage I want to look at, it's Palm Sunday, so that's the week before he got crucified. And uh, he's coming into Jerusalem for the first time. And so he's at the top of the crest, top of the hill where Mount of Olives begins. And he comes in, and the whole crowd of disciples bursts into enthusiastic praise. Now, they didn't worship that way back then. So that was a big deal. Over all the mighty works, notice again what God has done. That's what they're praising. He healed the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He, 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 he helped the lame walk. He did miracles. We're going to praise that, that they had seen. And they're singing, you know, blessed is he who comes, the king in God's name. All is well in heaven, glory in the high places. And the religious of the time, they were called Pharisees. The religious said, man, that's not how we do church. What are you doing? They actually said to Jesus, Jesus, come on, get your disciples under control. What, what are you doing? Come on. Jesus' response to that, you know, Jesus said, hey, if you keep quiet, even the stones, the rocks will praise me. They'll praise me. They'll shout joy. Why? Because when we praise, that's a sign of a radically transformed life. When we praise, it shows we've been touched by a fully alive God who cares about us. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Man, when you're touched by God, you can't help but praise. You can't help but praise. So there's power in that. And here, I want this for you so bad. There's so much joy found in praising. There really is. The garment of praise brings joy, my friend. Well, I want to close service with just a little biblical lesson for you. You know, I wanted to just cover something really quick. You know, we as teachers up here, sometimes we'll use Greek and Hebrew words. And if you didn't know it, the Bible, the OG Bible, the original Bible, was not written in English. No, actually, the original language was Hebrew and Greek. The Old Testament, see, the nation of Israel, uh, they, were, uh, they spoke Hebrew, and so that was the language that, and they wrote most of the Old Testament there. So that's why the original manuscripts, most of them are in Hebrew. The New Testament, see, the Greek culture society was influencing education at the time. So that's why the New Testament is in Greek. And this isn't, why we do that sometimes, why we'll go to the original word is because there is sometimes deeper meaning in the original word. And we really get at the root of what the author is trying to communicate when we do that. So here's an example. We've talked about this before. You know, we have an English word, love, love, but in the Greek, there's a couple words for love, you know, just the English word love, but in the Greek, we have the word agape, agape, which that's love, English word love, Greek word, the agape, that means unconditional love of God, no matter what I do, he loves me, English is just love, there's a difference there, you know, we have the English word love, we have the Greek word eros, eros, that's where we get our word erotic from, you know, healthy marriages with husbands and wives, they're having some eros in their marriage. There's some love going on there. You know, then we have the Greek word phileo, phileo. That's love. Once again, just the English word love. That means brotherly love. Like no physical intimacy, just, hey, we're br brotherly love here. Big difference, right? In the Hebrew language, it's even more than that. It's called a pictorial language. There's whole paragraphs used to describe one word in the Hebrew language. And so I want to look at this word praise with you. And you, there's seven words that describe praise in the Hebrew language. That's a lot. And so I want to give them to you really fast. And they're all coming from the book of Psalms. That's a book in the Bible, 150 chapters, and it's all about praise. That should tell you about something, how God feels about praise, right? 
praise. So here's your first one. Go ahead, write them down. We'll go through them quickly. The first one is Hallel. Hallel. This is where we get our word hallelujah from. You know, Hallel. Yah. The Yah part is actually, that means God. So we give praise to God. Here's the definition. And Samuel did not make this up. This is in every pastor's library. It's to rave, boast, celebrate, to be clamorously foolish. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a concert to me. <laughs> that sounds like a college football game. See, and there's something important here. See, we'll sit four hours in traffic. Then we'll get there four hours to the game early and eat, you know, food and try to talk to the players. And then we'll talk about all week how fun the game was. Why? Well, because when we were at that game, we hallelujah. We halleled. Why can't we do that in church? Why can't we do that in church? Why is it normal in the world but not here? See, when we really decide to hallelujah, we give God praise. It produces joy. It produces joy. Hallel. That's hallel. The second one is, well, let me highlight it here first. I will thank you in front of the great assembly. I will hallel. See, there's that word hallel you before all the people. Here's the second one. It's that yada, yada, not Yoda, not the little green dude. <laughs> yada, it's to acknowledge in public. See, this one, it's, and this, once again, not to offend anybody, you know, it's not, our faith is not meant to be a private faith. It's not. There's a public aspect to our faith. You know, this would be like if I left my wedding ring, you know, I'm leaving for the day, I give my wife Olivia a hug, then I leave my wedding, put it on the kitchen counter, and I leave, and I go about my day, do whatever I want, come back, put it back on, and, you know, hey, I love you, I just didn't want people to know we're in a relationship. How many of you know there would be hair, nails, and eyeballs all over the kitchen? <laughs> I would not survive. Same's true with God. When we have a relationship with him, it needs to have a public aspect. We acknowledge it in public. It says this in Psalms, I will yada you, O Lord, with all my heart. That's what he's saying there. I, with all my heart, I'm going to let everybody know that I love you. I will praise you in that way. So that's yada. The third word I want you to have is barak, barak. And that's to bless by kneeling or bowing. You see, God wants to bless you, and you don't physically have to kneel or bow. You can. There's nothing wrong with that. But what the literal uh, definition is getting at here is that we present ourselves to God. Lord, I'm going to surrender. I'm going to come. I'm going to present myself with expectation that he's going to give me something in return. Lord, would you, I just present myself, would you give to me? God, you're so amazing and generous. So we barak the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my inmost being, praise his holy name. And the, I don't have the second verse up here, but it's, it goes on to say, not forgetting all his benefits. See, when you present yourself, he says, okay, take some joy, take some joy. That's how you come in in one condition and leave in another. When you barak, you come, you present yourself to the Lord. The fourth word is zamar, zamar. That's making music. When we praise, we make music with instruments, specifically stringed ones. And so it says in Psalms, it is good to Zamar, the Lord, and make music to your name, O Most High. So I wanted you to have this passage. It's also here. It's not on your outline. It says, we Zamar him with the tambourine and dancing. And so some of you, when you read that, you're like, whoa, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> and I'm just communicating to you, you know, if you, I think for some of you, if you got a little air time off the ground, you would leave here a little lighter, okay? You would leave here with some joy. I'm not saying you have to jump, but there's something powerful. We go, I don't care what people think. I'm going to praise my God. And I empathize with you. You know, dancing, that can be a big step. You know, I went to a school growing up where dancing, they did not like dancing, a Baptist school, and they did not like dancing at this particular school. I've heard things have changed. But when I was going there, they did not like dancing. You know, so I empathize with you. They didn't like dancing so much in fact, that they actually didn't believe in premarital sex because they thought it would lead to dancing. So, I don't know why I said that. It's weird. It's weird. It's bad. <laughs> but there's something when we just come to a place where we're, God, here I am. I'm going to praise you with all of who I am. All of who I am. So we zamar him with the strings and the flute. We zamar him with the clash of cymbals. Zamar him with resounding cymbals. That means church might be a little loud, my friends. And if church is too loud, I need to counsel you because the Bible talks about heaven as when there's praise in heaven, it's as loud as a thousand waterfalls. That's loud. That's loud. So we zamar him. You know, the fifth one I want to give you is shabak. Shabak. This is to address in a loud tone to shout, to shout. 
This is what any time our worship leader or service host like Daniel did today, you know, they say, would you lift up a shout of praise? Really what they're saying is, would you, would you shabak? Would you shabak? We're going to lift up, we're going to clap and give a shout of praise to God. And remember, this is different than just being by yourself. Great play, great play. Or, you know, another way to imagine is like a loved one or somebody coming home from deployment that you care about. And they come around the corner and you don't go, it's good to see you. <laughs> Missed you a little bit. No, what do we do? I love you. You're back. You're back. Woo! Why can't church be that way? Why can't we come to God that way? Why is it normal every other place? We can't do it before God. See, I'm a Steelers fan, and I'm a cheer on my team, but I'm not going to give pray, more praise to a team that doesn't know my name than praise to a God who created me. Man, I'm going to praise him. It says this, because your love is better than life, amen, my lips will glorify you. I will shabak you as long as you live, and in your name I will lift up my hands, okay? Well, now that you have a new understanding of shabak and what that means is I actually wanted to practice together. And since I don't have the worship team up here, I needed some way to get your blood flowing. So I thought, man, Lord, what can I do? And a couple months ago, I did a gender reveal with my wife for our baby, and they have these confetti things now that actually they're kind of intense. And so I thought, man, let me go ahead and get one, and let's do Shabbat this way. <laughs> so what I want to do is on the count of three, I'm going to count up to three. One, two, three, and that's what I'm going to do. And when we get to three, what I want you to do is I'm going to pop this, and then I want you to clap, shout, and just give Shabbat to the Lord as if Jesus caught a Hail Mary and scored the winning <laughs> touchdown. All right? All right, you guys ready? Ready? One, two, three. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> That's Shabbat. Imagine if we did that every time we closed a worship song. Imagine if we closed service that way. Shabbat. That is praise, my friends. It's expressive. It's sh Church should be fun. Church should be fun. You play a key part in making that happen. Shabak, the sixth word, and we're almost done here, is toda, toda. And it means to lift hands. That's where we get the hands thing, to lift hands in adoration. See, he who offers praise toda, he who todas, lifts his hands, glorifies God. If you needed one reason to do it, there it is. Don't do it for others. Do it because it glorifies God. It honors God. And then the last one is tequila, not tequila. Okay. <laughs> Somebody said, ooh, that's my favorite one now. <laughs> no, tehila, although it has a similar reaction, exuberant singing. <laughs> hold on, hold on. The verse is even funnier. I will stole the Lord at all times. His tehila will always be on my lips. <laughs> it's bad. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> hey, I want to have fun. I wanted to have fun with you. Don't get lost in all of the Hebrew words. It's just praise. It's just praise. It's just a choice we have to make. It's a choice we have to make. And I know this might stretch some of you. I really do. And I empathize with you. But I, I really want praise for you. I want joy for you. And it's produced through a choice we make through praise. And for some of you here, you've just never taken that step because you've never given, been given permission in church. And I give you permission. I give you permission because I want joy for you so bad. Here's a kicker. You were created to do this. You were. There's a reason people love concerts and loud football games. Never did somebody leave a game and go, man, that game was too loud. No, we were created to do that. And the world, what it'll do is it will replace. It'll replace it. But there's something to praise that when we step into that, we put on that garment of praise. We choose to wear it. God puts joy on us. It rebuffs the spirit of heaviness and it plants joy. See, we have to make some choices. When we choose to pray first, it produces joy. We don't act first. We pray first. We make a choice of purity. We can't be happy and guilty at the same time. We make a choice to give it to God, and then we make a choice to praise. And, and it doesn't matter what's going on, and it's not worship. It doesn't matter what's going on. I'm going to praise God. There's joy in that. So I wanted to close with this thought that it's important because the only part of life we can really control is our reaction. 
You can't control your circumstances. You can't control the weather. You can't control the economy. You can't control your spouse. And you can't control your health or the health of those you love. You can't. The only thing we can control is our response. Amen. That's why it's so key. If you don't know this last blank on your outline, haven't done my job. It's so key that we choose joy. We choose to have joy. Would you bow your heads? We're going to close in prayer. Yes, Lord, I thank you for the fun we've had today, Father, the joy, Lord. But I really just feel that the Spirit wants me to pray for some of you that I need to rebuke the spirit of heaviness off of you. That some of you in here, I really felt this, have been thinking of taking your life, and I want to break the power that has over you. Some of you in here, you haven't thought of taking your life, but you've, you're overwhelmed. You're at the end of it. You have a hard time sleeping. The stress and the anxiety, your mind's always running. All the problems. It's the spirit of heaviness, my friends. It really is. And so I want to break the power of that. So I just pray over you in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the power of the spirit of heaviness right now. Lord, I silence the voice of the enemy who would tell us we don't matter, who would tell you you don't matter. I silence that and I cast it out in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, would you replace with joy? Father, every area where there's ashes or there's mourning, Lord, would you replace it with beauty, with dancing? Would you just give us joy, Lord? And I'm not talking about internal happiness. No, Jesus, would you just give us the full measure of joy you have for us? Yes, Lord. With every head bowed and every eye closed, some of you have had a hard time in this series because you've said to yourself, man, I just don't feel the joy. I don't feel it. I'm trying to choose it, but I don't know it's not working. And I'm telling you, hear this, I'm telling you, it's because you're still in control of a part of your life. You're still in control of a part of your life. See, Jesus gave his life for us when he died on the cross. And our response to that is to give him our life. My favorite word to describe my salvation is surrender. I surrender the controls of my life over to you, God. doesn't matter if I feel it or I like it or I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to give it to you. But it's a choice we have to make. Some of you in here, you are a Christian, but you've taken back the controls. You're in control of a part of your life. Some of you in here, you don't even know where you are. I just know I need, I'm far from God. I need more of God in my life. What I want to do is I want to pray with you right where you are. If I'm describing you. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to pray with you right where you are. I'm not going to make you stand up, come down front. It's not about joining the church. No, it's about just coming to Jesus, giving him your life, surrendering it all to him. And we can do that through prayer. So I want to pray with you right where you are. And what I want you to do, if you're, if you're saying, Samuel, that's me, I want to pray with you. I need God. I want to pray with you. What I want you to do is I want you to make a motion towards God. I want to see who I'm praying with. So would you just raise your hand, lift it up high so I can see who I'm praying with. I see that. Yep, keep it up so I can see. I see that. Yes, 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 yes. Yep, yes, I see that. Yeah, yep, I see that too. <laughs> Praise God. You can put your hands down. All right, now I want to pray with you. You can whisper it at your seat, right there where you are. And even if you didn't raise your hand, but you need to pray this, pray it with me right now. Repeat after me. Just believe in your heart. I'll help you with words. Would you say, Jesus, I need you. I give you my life. I surrender now. God, I will follow you as best as I know how. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I receive your free gift of salvation. Thank you for having a plan for my life. Give me the courage to walk out that plan. Jesus, today I begin a relationship with you. Mm. Say this like you mean it. Today I declare I will never be the same. Jesus, I love you. In his mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Vineyard, would you celebrate with me those who...
awesome decisions that were made. Well, we're going to close with one praise song, okay? But hey, real quick, if you prayed with me, if you're online, there's a button you can click. If you're here in service today and you prayed with me, you have a next step. Hear me, you have a next step. Your connect card attached to your program. There's a place there you can check a box. I prayed with you, Samuel. I prayed with you, okay? And you can drop that in the clear boxes on your way out. And hear this, when you do that, there's a lot of prayer requests that are dropped in there, so you're anonymous. And when you do that, I'm not showing up to your house. We're not calling you. No, we're going to send you an email with some next steps you can take. Some next steps. Because your faith is meant to be walked out, and you're not meant to walk it alone. Okay? And so we want to send you that and just celebrate with you for making that decision. One of those next steps we're going to tell you about is actually growth track, which I mentioned. Step one happening today right after service. Some of you, that is your step to take today. We have food and child care. Pastor Sharon teaches it. And uh, I just invite you to come be a part. Come be a part of the dream team where you're finding fulfillment and just making a difference with your life. There's joy in that, my friends. We talked about that last week. There's joy in that. Okay? So we're going to close with one last praise song. And why we praise, we're going to also give what's on our hearts to give. If you're a guest here, don't feel any pressure at all to participate in that part, this part of the service. That's for those who call Vineyard Church their home. All right? But, hey, those, those who give, thank you for helping make church fun. You help make church fun. You really do. And you help this church be more than these four walls. You help us mobilize and share Jesus with the community. So thank you. Thank you. And it's a joy. It really is. Well, let's go ahead and close with one last praise song. Would you stand to your feet? And let's, let's praise. Let's really praise with this last song. In the mighty name of Jesus, I just start this praise song. Lord, we celebrate you. Would you receive our giving and our offering? Father, we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare, let's sing.